the building itself was built in 1892 as the campus's first official building. In those days, when a building like this was planned and designed, the clock was as much a part of the plan for the building as building the foundation. It was, quote, a seven-day clock, but there's a lot of winding that goes into winding that clock if you let it go for more than two or three days. During my career, we never let it go more than four or five days. That was about as long as you'd want to stay in there and wind the clock. This, this antique piece here uh, is how we used to wind the clock. <laughs> when the building underwent the renovation in 2006, that is when they mechanized it to run off a motor. My relationship now is strictly just uh, occasionally bringing someone to see this. And what we have here that you see in there and at this level here is a Howard clock operation. 1917 over here, E.E. E. Lorton. People sign up here. It's been happening since the building was built. Uh, this looks like a good spot. <laughs> This is where you came to leave your mark. I signed it back in, in 77, 78 when I became uh, responsible for the building at night, but I don't truthfully remember where. <laughs> what, what you just heard is the Westminster chime. It's a 15 minute adjustment. Every 15 minutes it does a piece and it does the full cycle on the hour. Then it chimes a number of hours on the clock. The way the clock was set up originally is the clock would set up not only the time on the three faces, but it was also chimed to ring on the hour um, upstairs. And a number of years ago, prior to the renovation, concerns from our neighbors were that the clock was loud at night, so we stopped ringing the clock bell at night and it's all handled by daytime by speakers from the Alumni Center. A lot of people think it's all happening up there, but it's really not. <laughs> it's a tape mm -hmm. they're playing? It's huh? not like a player piano. Like no. Kind of, no. It's a speaker it's playing tape. a tape. Yep. Speakers are upstairs, and it plays the tape from over there. Of course, then there's a whole different perspective of what you get to see when you go upstairs. <laughs> oh, golly gee. This is a little scary. The top step is a big one. Yeah? best views on campus. From up here, you've got a beautiful green view today. It's, it's the greatest place on campus to be in the fall when the foliage is at its peak, but it's even pretty up here in the winter. Uh, it's pretty cold, but with, when you don't have leaves on the trees, you can actually see from here to Portsmouth, so that it's, it's, a, it's a whole different perspective from up here. This bell was cast at the Neely Foundry in Troy, New York in 1893. It no longer swings. It's too well balanced. If you pull that rope downstairs now, it will stay. It will ring, but it'll ring once. The speakers are warming up, so just so you're aware, the speakers are going to do a 2 o'clock Westminster chime. It'll be loud, because we're lucky because it's only going to ring twice. Uh, it's, it's an interesting interesting place to be when it does all 12. If it's not already shot, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Students and staff see T Hall from an outside perspective. And you don't really see T Hall as an inside place unless you work here or have a meeting here. But just being in the building, it's a totally different place than a lot of people think it is. But when you get away from the first, second, and third floors, and you're up here, it's, it's even more strange because it's like, wow, I didn't know this was here. 
It's a unique experience. Part of life at UNH. <laughs>